physiology exam for this is a lecture on growth hormone. First of all, starting out, we understand that we have the pituitary gland, also called the hypophysis. hypophysis. The hypophysis has an anterior and a posterior portion. The anterior portion is called the adenohypophysis, and the posterior portion is called the neurohypophysis. The neurohypophysis is all composed of um, nerves and nerve endings that come from different parts of the hypothalamus. However, the um, anterior pituitary, the adenohypophysis, is composed of lots of cells that are triggered to release hormones um, from messages put in the blood, or uh, peptides put in the blood from the um, hypothalamus that travel down and then um, bind to these cells. These cells uh, of the anterior pituitary include somatotropes, thyrotropes, gonadotropes, and lactotropes, and each of the different cells produces a different, um, a different peptide or different signal. The somatotropes release growth hormone. You can think of growth hormone causing your body to grow. Somato means, or soma means body. So soma, somatotropes, growth hormone. Thyrotropes, thyrotropin, um, or, uh, thyroid hormone, gonadotropes, um, uh, are the ones that go to uh, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Um, lactotropes, we're looking at um, uh, pro, not prolactin. Anyways, I can't remember right now. It's getting late in the day. Anyways, so yeah, you can look at that. But the one we're talking about in this lecture is particularly is growth hormone and the effects of growth horm hormone in the body. So somatotropes uh, release growth hormone in response to growth hormone releasing hormone, which comes from the hypothalamus, goes into the into a capillary bed, travels down, and binds to these cells. So growth hormone releasing hormone will increase the release of growth hormone, whereas somatostatin will decrease the release of growth hormone. There's other factors though that, that play in here that cause more growth hormone release. Um, sleep most of the growth hormone is released during sleep. <coughs> Excuse me. Exercise will also induce some growth hormone. So will hypoglycemia. So if you have less sugar in your blood, that's going to trigger more growth hormone to come out. And maybe this will make more sense as we go through this. Um, excitement, stress, trauma, ghrelin and increased plasma amino acids. All these things will cause an increase in the release of growth hormone. On the flip side, what are things that are gonna cause a decrease in growth hormone? I already mentioned somatostatin. Well, also having lots of growth hormone will cause it. It's, it's a negative feedback. So the more growth hormone you have floating around, it's gonna start inhibiting itself. Also something called IGFs, which stands for insulin-like growth factor, which is something that's released in response to growth hormone. So IGFs, more of those will decrease growth hormone levels. Also, hyperglycemia. So hypoglycemia causes more growth hormone to be released, whereas hyperglycemia causes less growth hormone to be released. So the release of growth hormone is pulsatile, which means it's not just constantly secreting. It'll wait three to five hours, and then it'll release a bunch, and then it'll stop for three to five hours, and it'll release a bunch. So the plasma levels are maybe not always consistent. When growth hormone releasing hormone binds to a somatotrope, it increases the calcium transport, which causes exocytosis of the vesicles that are containing growth hormone. So that's how that works. That's how it works in every cell, so that makes sense. Okay, so what does this do exactly? Well, there's a lot of things that can, that can happen here. Sometimes these people will get, uh, people will get a tumor in their, uh, like apparently before the epiphyseal plate seals off, there'll be some sort of effect that'll happen there and they'll get like a tumor that have more cells that secrete this. And that results in giganticism. But if they have a tumor of these, in the somatotropes or whatever, so I guess too many of them, then that'll ca cause acromegaly. And a person with acromegaly will get like a big jaw, huge hands, thickened hands, uh, larger tongue, larger feet, incre increased size of their liver and their kidney, as well as their, I don't know if I mentioned craniums, this like part of their head right here that gets bigger in their head altogether. Um, somebody who doesn't have enough 
not enough growth hormone or, or has a deficiency of it is, is just going to have short stature. This is not the same thing as achondroplasia. Achondroplasia, they have a normal sized torso, but they have short hands and legs. Uh, that's the most common kind of dwarfism, and that's not related to growth, growth hormone at all. You can give them tons of growth hormone, it's not going to make any difference because it's not a growth hormone effect. It has something to do with uh, their bones growing, or just their, their limbs. Um, as you get older, the amount of growth hormone in your body actually decreases. So what that results in is an increase in fat and a decrease in muscle. So that makes sense because that's what old people usually look like. Um, if you were to give somebody exogenous growth hormone, you know, you will see an increase in lean muscle and a decrease in fat, but there's also some really negative side effects. Some of these negative side effects are an increase in uh, the amount of type 2 diabetes the person gets, increase in ketoacidosis, an increase in carpal tunnel syndrome, because they have these big hands and it presses down on the uh, carpal tunnel. Uh, edema, joint pain, you can imagine joint pain, they're, they're getting larger, their joints are going to hurt. Also they get, can get gynecomastia. Ooh and also increased incidences of colon and breast cancer. So these are all you know, effects of taking exogenous growth hormone. But there's also other effects in the body. For example, in, the, in metabolism, and, uh, if a person ha has growth hormone, it's gonna has, have effects on their metabolism. It's going to cause increased liver hepatocyte gluconeogenesis. What does that mean? It's going to cause you to have, it's going to take more, um, it's basically going to create sugar, okay? So it's going to break things down and it's going to, it's going to create sugar, which makes sense. If, remember if we went back, sorry, the lights just turned off. Um, if you go back, um, having hypoglycemia was something that caused an, a, a positive effect for, um, for growth hormone. One second, I'll turn the light on. So now you can see that also it's this liver hepatocyte, liver hepatocytes respond to, you know, hypoglycemia um, by releasing, you know, they release, anyway, you can see it's a, it's a feedback signal there. It also causes an increased amino acid transport into the cell and uh, increased protein synthesis, which makes sense because you're growing, you're going to be, you have to make more protein if you're going to grow more also causes an increase in translation and transcription with the DNA and RNA. It increases fatty acid mobilization and ultimately acetyl-CoA conversion, which makes sense, you're gonna need more energy to grow more. It also de decreases some things in the metabolism. It decreases skeletal muscle glucose uptake. This might be in part to the fact that it's requiring that glucose and the energy to build more body, I don't know, but maybe that's a good way you can think of it. So the less of the glucose gets uptake in the skeletal muscle because it's too busy being used elsewhere to build stuff. So that means decreased glucose utilization by skeletal muscle. So they might, big people might be more tired or maybe weaker, I don't know. Also a decrease in adipose tissue uh, glucose uptake. So your, adip your adipose tissue, the more growth hormone you have, it's not going to take up as much sugar, which means you're not going to get as fat, which means you'll be more lean. So you get more growth hormone, doesn't make you fat, it makes you stronger, it makes you bigger. What about bone growth? Well, um, growth hormone triggers also an increase in osteocyte protein deposition, which makes sense. You see people with, with uh, maybe uh, acromegaly or gigantism or whatever, and they'll have you know, bigger bones, bigger hands, bigger feet. Their bone structure gets enlarged, and that's because the osteocytes are laying down more of this protein for, for their matrix. Also, you're gonna see an increase in osteocyte mitosis rate, which means they're dividing faster. And you're also gonna see more chondrocytes changing in to osteocytes, which is a normal thing for getting more bone. And also you're gonna see more osteoblast activity, which also makes sense. So osteoclasts break down bone, osteoblasts build up bone, right? But this is young um, osteoblasts. Anyway, yeah, osteoblasts are, are like uh, young bone cells. Okay, so what else other effects it has? It also has some effects in the liver. The main effect in the liver is that when um, the liver is exposed to growth hormone, it produces something called insulin-like growth factor, which has some homologous amino acids with, um, with insulin. That's why I call it insulin-like growth factor. Uh, so growth, growth hormone itself has a half-life of about 20 to 25 minutes, 
whereas insulin-like growth factor has a half-life of like 20 hours. It's stabilized by a, bri a binding protein. Um, so that kind of increases that, that effect of that. Um, this, the, I also mentioned also the pulsatile secretion of the growth hormone is a factor. Okay, so the most important of all the insulin-like growth, um, growth factors is gonna be insulin growth factor one, or IGF-1. And this is mitogenic, which means it causes cells to divide more. And it's also anti-apoptotic, which means it prevents cells from being killed. Um, and apparently they can find it in the velvet on deer antlers and they extract it and they give it to people when it acts like a growth hormone or it causes them to have the effects of insulin-like growth factor. And I believe that is everything that is on this lecture. Yep.